There's a lot of debate going on right now with Overwatch 2, specifically about 5v5 versus 6v6. And there are a ton of proposed solutions, whether it's revert back to 6v6 or it's 5v5 open queue, or just keep the game exactly as it is and just have different balancing. Now, regardless of the proposed solutions and your thoughts on them, there is one fundamental problem that we have never solved in Overwatch, and it's the tank problem. Specifically because the tank role is so incredibly hard to find a balance to and there are a lot of problems with the role that might never get solved but before we begin it says only 20 percent of you are subscribed so if you enjoy the content or if you just want to support the channel please subscribe and let's get into it i think it's really important to understand that the tank role is incredibly vital to how the game feels we all know how important the tank is for creating team fights, taking objectives. A tank is a character that can take space and not instantly die. Yes, they're gonna be pumped with resources like healing, but they are the character with the mitigation tools and the health totals to take on large amounts of cooldowns and damage and sustain it. And we all know how important that is because if your tank is alive and the opponent doesn't have one, the team fight is almost always in your favor if you have a way to regenerate their health, give them those resources. And really, tanks are the most important decider in a lot of team fights or whether they are won or lost. Now, the problem though with tanking as a whole, and the problem with a lot of proposed solutions about going back to 5v5 and 6v6, is the problem of queue times. And I think that this is one that is overlooked so far freaking often because i think players don't really recognize or understand how important queue times are in the overarching state of the game if you can't find a game you're gonna move on to something else almost every single other shooter game you can get in a game within one to two minutes but i basically all but quit overwatch one back towards the end because I was waiting for 18 plus minutes to find a DPS queue, and even support queues weren't very good. I could find a game on tank like instantly, but sometimes it would throw me into a freaking high diamond lobby as a Grandmaster tank player. It was just not competitive in any way at all. Now, I think that there are potential fixes to that and potential solutions to that problem, but the most important question that I want to kind of circle back to is why is the tanking role so unpopular? Why do people not like tanking? tanks not like playing tanks and it really circles around to my point which is that tanks is a role of responsibility when a lot of the other roles have freedom and flexibility let me fully explain what i mean so a tank has to take space they have to contest objectives they have to keep other tanks in check or they have to apply pressure they have all these responsibilities that they have to accomplish and oftentimes they even might have to swap so that they remain viable and this was true in overwatch one it's more true in overwatch two but regardless a tank player feels a certain burden of responsibility to the team they are very important as a role as a character and they need to fulfill these quote-unquote responsibilities but a DPS player and a support player, as of Season 9, they have freedom and flexibility and the ability to make options in their gameplay about what they should be doing, what they can do. Players can go for an aggressive play at the cost of maybe not healing, or a DPS player can go for a flank at, at the cost of not applying pressure on the front line. They have all these options, all this flexibility, and tanks have to do very specific things they have to meet certain responsibilities more so by a lot than any other role and this is really the problem because tanking oftentimes feels more like a job than a hobby or it feels like something that you have to do not something that you want to do and combine that with the fact that tanks have to be the one to tank all the cooldowns they have to be the one to eat the things that are trying to deny you your ability to make plays or have agency on the self and if you die and feed people get mad at you people flame you lose their minds if you're not doing everything that you're supposed to do while at the same time dps and support players are doing whatever they want the majority of the time and I'm not saying that there aren't responsibilities for DPS and support players too. It's just the amount of needed actions versus the amount of flexible actions. It's just a crazy difference when you compare it to the tank role. And I think all of that combined makes it so that the tanking role is not as fun because people like freedom in their games. But at the same time, the tanking role is undoubtedly the most important role for balance, game state, and everything in between. If the tanking role is not optimized, then 
the meta could be something completely crazy. And we saw that a lot in Overwatch 1 with double shields and goats and things like that. You have a role that is so important and vital to a game's success, pace of play, how the game is played, and they're pretty much the most important role, in my opinion, by quite a margin. But because of all the things that a tank is responsible for, they also are a very taxed role, a very responsible role, a very unfun role at times. And I think the problem here is that there isn't really a way to make it so that the tank does all of the things that they are doing right now, but make them much more fun. At any point in the game, tanks have to take space, have to sustain, have to mitigate cooldowns. That is their job. It's built into the role itself, but at the same time, it's part of the many reasons why the tanking role is less fun than the other roles. So you have a role that is super important, but super unpicked because people don't want to play tank. And this has been the core problem of every single thing that we've dealt with in Overwatch, really, at its core. And let me explain. Why did we go into role lock? What was the main reason? Well, the biggest one is that we never freaking got tanks. Almost never. You would get supports. You would definitely get DPS. But you would rarely get tanks. And if you did, you would get ball. You would get freaking Roadhog. Back in Overwatch 1, tanks were not locked. So you could play whatever you want. And most of the time, there would be no tanks or one tank on a team. And everyone felt this. Everyone knew this. They were looking at pro play and seeing these really cool coordinated environments with coordinated teams, with dives, with Winston Diva and all this cool stuff. And people really admired that. But you got to understand that roles based on responsibility are roles that get to actually function properly when they're played in a coordinated setting where your responsibility is to win and play together, right? But not in a ranked environment. Not when people get to choose. Not when everyone gets to decide what they play. And it was just the Wild West in Overwatch. I mean, there was so many complete non-games. And not like the non-games that you have today where you're like, oh, we lost and then y'all might win or maybe it's possible if you start to pop off. It was like, no, the enemy team had a real comp, like a real functional composition, and you had no tanks. It was just like, okay, well, we lose. Yeah, we lose. And this happened more than you would think. So what did Blizzard do? What did Blizzard ultimately have to do? They did 2-2-2. So now, all of a sudden, you have tanks that could fulfill the roles. You have DPS and supports as well. And I think this was a way better reality than the previous one. But it wasn't perfect either. The two tanks could be any two tanks. So, yes, sometimes you would get Winston Diva. And sometimes you would get Ryan Zara. But a good percentage of the time... You would get complete and utter nonsense with just tanks that don't synergize and they just went and did their own thing. Like a ball that would always flank and a hog that would always flank and you were just, you know, just playing nonsense again. The game was in a better state, but not much better. And they had a ticket system where you would have to queue tank in order to get faster queue times with the other roles. So players would lock something in the tank role. But once again, the quote unquote responsibility of a tank, they would try to avoid that. They would pick characters that don't have that responsibility or they wouldn't live up to that responsibility. If you're a hog that is permanently flanking in their back line, never contesting, never creating space in the normal traditional sense, you are not really fulfilling the role of a tank. You are trying to play a character that plays in a way that doesn't fulfill the responsibility of the tank. And this was what players did. They often would not actually still play tank. Like, yes, they're playing tanks, but they're not playing the role of tank. And this never changed even when we went into role lock. Yes, sometimes you would have players that would, but it'd be more and more uncommon with players often just trying to cash in on those tickets and then just play the roles that they actually wanted to play and not the least popular role in the game by quite a margin. And especially as the population started to decline slightly towards the ending cycle of the game, if you were in any reasonably high elo as another role, especially DPS, you just had freaking 18, 20 minute plus queue times. And that is really what caused me to walk away from the game back then because I could get insta queues in pretty much every other shooter, but I'm not waiting 20 minutes to get a game that could end in 10. It just, it just didn't make any sense and it's not something that will continue to foster a healthy environment for your game. And people got frustrated with that. More people left. It increased the tanking problem. And you kind of see here that multiple of the big decisions that Blizzard has made has to do with the popularity of tanks. A role that is vital, but incredibly unpopular. And that has never changed. And now we go into the 5v5 situation. So to seemingly quote unquote fix the tank problem, you're only going to have one tank, right? You're only going to have one tank and not two because there's less people that want to play tank. So we're going to balance the queue times by having only one. Here's the problem. Having one tank worsens the tanking experience 
as a whole. It makes it so that tanking has to deal with more things. There's more responsibility. Remember, I talked about how tanking and responsibility go hand in hand. The responsibility is higher for you as an individual tank than as two tanks, right? And tanks have to become more homogenized, so they can't have as unique of identities because tanks need to be able to deal with a multitude of different things that come their way and not easily just get countered or else you're just going to have the counter swapping problem. So in a way, the new 5v5 system has increased the responsibility aspect of tanks, which makes it so people like tanking less, the tank experience is worse, and there's going to be even less people picking tank. Now, like I said, you cannot remove this responsibility from tanking. It's intrinsic to the tanking role as a whole. And unlike other creators, I'm not going to propose a solution because I don't think there is one. Like, there isn't a perfect solution. No matter what you do, the tank problem will always be there. The responsibility of a tank, the lack of interest in playing the tank, this will always be there. There isn't a way to make a great tanking environment. You could say, hey, let's go back to 6v6, take away some of the responsibility from an individual tank. But then I would say, yeah, that's not going to work if we don't have the population numbers that we did in the past. The queue times would be unrealistic. We would lose even more players. DPS support players would get disinterested, and that's how we could kill the game. And then you'd say, well, the alternative is we do 5v5 with tanking have all this responsibility, and they're eating cooldowns. They're playing really linear gameplay. They're not having fun. They don't have agency. And to that, I would agree to you. I would agree and say the 5v5 tank experience is also completely terrible and unacceptable. But there isn't a solution like that is not a great solution and neither is in my opinion 6v6 and going back to open queue also causes all kinds of problems so the reality of it is i think all of this is the fault of the tank but it's also what has made overwatch overwatch so yeah it's a catch-22 and i don't think there's a solution i don't think there's a perfect solution i think we have semi solutions partial solutions and right now the only solution i could see is that tanks lose a lot of their uniqueness and identity, become more homogenized, and become tanks that can deal with a lot more problems. And yeah, that creates boring design, but boring design in the tanking category is better than having a very frustrating experience, a counter-swapping experience all the time. So you pick your poison. Do you want more boring, similar tanks where you can actually play the game? Or do you want unique characters where most of them can get counter-swapped or they just won't function if the enemy picks certain characters? Like I said, there's not a great solution to any of this, and that's a very unsatisfying answer towards the end of this video, but that's not really what this video is about. It's not about finding answers. It's about talking about the core problem with Overwatch since the beginning, and the problem that has literally never been solved, and I don't think ever will be solved perfectly. But if you have any suggestions, I will read them all in the comments down below, so let me know, and only 20% of you subscribe, so please subscribe if you enjoy the thoughtful discussions. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.